Hello and welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 38. Uh, we are doing exercises for module E. So this is the async stuff. So some of this, I think it might be tricky. Um, so um, we'll struggle through it. And uh, um, if I seem like I'm on top of it, it's probably because I cut a bit out of the video where I got lost. So um, if you get lost trying it, uh, don't feel bad. Um, yeah, as always, encourage you to try these exercises yourself before you watch me if you want to get the most out of them. But, like me, if you're just watching this for fun, you want to watch me struggle my way through them, uh, don't feel bad, you're allowed to do that. Okay, so uh, uh, the first exercise is broken into two parts, and we'll see how many we get through. Uh, it's about channels. So channels are a good way of dealing with threads, or sometimes async stuff, a way of passing information from one place to another, from one thread to another, or from one async task to another. And without having to deal with the pain of uh, locking and stuff like that. I mean, they do locking inside, but you don't have to worry about it. Um, yeah, so you can decouple stuff. Um, we'll see how that can come in nicely in exercise E2. Okay, so in, in this exercise, we're going to implement two types of channel. Um, a one-shot channel and a multiple producer single consumer channel. Um, and then they suggest we might be up for a challenge, but we're probably not. We'll see. Okay, so let's look at the first exercise. A multi-producer single consumer channel is a channel that allows for multiple senders to send many messages to a single receiver. So open up the channels um, thing in your editor. And we're just going to run the test that says MPSC. And it just says fix the to-dos to make the test pass. Okay, if it gets stuck, we're not using the waker correctly. Or maybe it returns pending when it shouldn't. Okay, so I'm going to try and talk about when you shouldn't, you should only return pending if you've set something up to wake you up later. So we'll hope maybe we'll get to that. All right, so, um, so I've run, let's just do that again. So when I run the tests, uh, inside this, um, this channels exercise, um, I get, uh, some panics. I get a panic. Panic in a destructor during cleanup. So something has gone badly wrong here. Uh, it doesn't normally, panics don't normally look as terrifying as this. Oh, but here we are. We panicked at line 66. And then I think we panicked in the cleanup code, and that's why it looks bad. Yeah, okay. So let's have a look at this MPSC, multiple producer, single consumer. The RS line 66. Now, before we go too far, let's have a brief overview of how, how what this code looks like generally. Um, so it is, there's a, like an error type. Well, there's only one possible thing, a receiver dropped. Maybe we'll add some more. And then there's this thing called inner, which is held inside a receiver. And maybe also in, inside a sender, we'll see. So inner presumably is the thing that really represents the channel. It's got a buffer in it, which is where information that hasn't yet come through the channel is, is sitting. It's got a waker, which is the thing that wakes you up if you're pending. I'm not really sure what that means, but waker is being brought in from the async uh, task, which is, I guess, part of the async um, framework. Um, receiver dropped, I guess that stands for. A boolean and number of senders that are not yet dropped. Okay, so yeah, there's one receiver, multiple senders, and we're keeping track of like how many of them are around. One, this one with a boolean, this one with a count of number of senders that are still around. So we're doing a kind of um, um, reference counting type thing in there. Okay, and then we have receiver, which is the thing that will actually presumably be returned to the person when they create a channel, and inside it's holding on to this inner, which is protected by mutex. Uh, and receiver implements stream. And stream has a poll next method. So a stream is like an async iterator, um, or it's like a future that you can call multiple times. So it has this poll next thing on it. Um, the types of item are, are not defined. They're part of the generic part of this thing. So this is basically a stream of, of T, of T um, which we're calling receiver of T. It has this poll next method, um, which it looks like a poll method, right? It's got um, 
self held in a pin and a context and it returns um, either pending or ready of an option of an item because this is because it's an iterator right so poll poll pending or, or ready it tells us um, you know that either I've finished the work and here, here it is or I finished this because it's an it's like an iterator I've you know I finished one piece of work here it is um, or I'm not ready yet and then inside that it's like okay uh, none if we've finished iterating and some if we haven't and if it's some then here's your item that you actually wanted Okay, and then we've got a load of to-dos for the actual implementation, which we'll get back to. But basically, the whole point of poll next is to provide us with the next uh, thing that's been sent by the sender with the receiver. So, I will read those to-dos in a minute, and we'll just keep going with our overview. So when the receiver gets dropped, it tells the inner that the receiver has been dropped. Multiple use a single receiver. Yes, yeah, so there's only one receiver. Um, and it just tells the inner that that's happened. And then, okay, sender also holds on to inner um, with an arc. So the point of the arc is that multiple things share ownership. So all the senders and the receiver, they all share ownership. And they have a mutex, meaning that only one of them can actually use that inner thing at a time. And when the sender sends, then we need to do some stuff. We get hold of the inner and then we do some things. Uh, we also implement clone for sender, which just because you can have multiple senders, the way you get more senders is by cloning. We can implement drop, which tells tells the inner thing uh, someone got dropped. And then here's the kind of constructor that creates a sender and a receiver. The reason why this kind of makes sense to me is because I've used the MPSC that comes with the standard library and it looks a bit like this. So here We've got a function called channel, which creates a sender and a receiver at the same time. It does that by creating an inner and then wrapping it uh, in an arc and then giving that to, giving the arc to both the sender and the receiver and returning it. Okay, and then the tests are just going to be using it. All right, so so far this makes sense to me. So um, we create a channel, which gives us back a transmitter and a receiver. And then we send 100 numbers and then we receive the 100 numbers and they should the numbers 0 to 100, fine. Here we create a transmitter, a receiver, drop the transmitter, <coughs> and the receiver should say, oh, we're done, because um, there are no more senders. So TX means transmitter, or in our case, sender, by the way. So and RX means receiver. So when we ask the receiver um, for the next thing, it says that um, we finished because there are no more transmitters. Um, if we drop the receiver and then we try and send, then we get a send error because there's no one to receive it. That makes sense. Okay, and then multiple transmitters. So here we make a channel and then we clone the sender 10 times, send the number from each of those separate senders, and we should, and then drop, oh, we drop the transmitter. Okay, we dropped all the transmitters now. I wonder why we're doing that. Um, and then we receive, just receive everything we can through the um, receiver until it stops. Oh, we drop it because otherwise this while loop will never end because there might be more coming from transmitters and we want this while loop to end. So we receive everything, insert it into this receive messages set and then the receive messages set should contain all of the... Um, um, yeah, okay, so we're, we're this, oh, this set sorts them. So now when we've, when, once we've sorted them, we can just check that they're, um, that there's the numbers one to ten in there. Okay, so this is basically just checking that our uh, channel works the way we expect. And this is the implementation. And we've got a load of to dos. I wonder what test we can get to pass first. Maybe we just do the to dos from top to bottom. Let's start off doing that and see where we get to. All right, so um, the first thing they say is you should replace the inner waker with the waker from the context. So we've got hold of inner, and it, we've got a mutual reference to it, and it has this waker. So we can ask the context for its... I think there's a context in the waker, a waker in the context. Yeah, so I think if we... We probably need to clone it. 
And we need to wrap it in an option because I noticed that our inner waker has, um, it has an option in it. Okay, so I think I've done that to do. So basically what we're saying is every time we get polled, um, make sure that the waker we're holding on to is the current waker that we've been given in this context. So just to waffle slightly more about the waker, I don't understand it very well. Um, but basically every time we return poll pending, we're not going to get polled again until um, someone tells the runtime you should call poll again. And that, that only works, that only happens if we have told some kind of waker wakes up um, when this particular thing happens. Like say a time has gone off or we got some information from somewhere. So um, we need to keep hold of that waker so that we can tell it when it needs to wake us up in some way that I don't fully understand. All right. So return. Well, let's, let's run our test. Nothing's gonna, still going to fail, right? Got more warnings. Same kind of failure. Something's not, not right. Okay, so. Um, okay, so if we have items in our buffer, return ready and return like the first item. That makes sense? Okay, so. Um, I guess we can say if some item is in, is at the front of um, the, the buffer, which I think we could do buffer dot pop, say. Should we say front? I guess we're going to push back and pop front. That's what I'm going for. It's a vec deck, so it doesn't matter. You could do it either way, I think. It would be, still be reasonably efficient. So if we get back something from calling pop front, as in give me the first thing that's waiting in the queue, then we're going to return poll ready. I mean, exactly what they, they told us to do there with the right number of brackets. Okay. And uh, this, yeah, so uh, th this should be the rest of the thing. It will, the return type will now be right. Yeah. Um, okay. So if we've got, if we've got something in our queue, return it. Otherwise, if it's empty, return poll pending, unless all the senders have been dropped. So if all the senders have been dropped, so let's just do this. If um, transactions, uh, tr transmitters left is zero, then we're going to return poll ready none. Otherwise, there's still, there are still senders, um, but we've got nothing in our queue. So, um, we're pending. So I think that's right. I don't think I want to run the tests yet because, um, this, we're returning poll pending here, but I don't think we're actually waking yet because we haven't done anything on send yet. So let's leave it for now. Keep working. Okay, when we drop the receiver, inner should know. So receiver dropped equals two. I think it's just as easy as that, right? Tell the receiver, tell the inner that receiver was dropped. Fine. Now when we're sending. Um, okay, if the receiver was dropped, we immediately return an error because you can't send when the receiver's been dropped. So if... The receiver was dropped. Then, well, it's just this, right? Return that. Otherwise, the receiver wasn't dropped. Um, so, we still have receivers. Uh, we don't mean, we mean send error, I think. Yeah, little bug in the exercise there. Um, all right. Um, otherwise, uh, the, like there are still receivers. We've been given something to send. So let's store it in a buffer. 
We said push. What did I say? I was going to pop front and push back. And that, that makes sense because it's the front of the queue, right? So, um, yeah, pop, we're popping front, so we're going to push back. So it, 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 that's the way we would think of a queue, right? Like when we receive a new one, we put it to the back of the queue. So I think front, front and back are sensible just from a language point of view here. Um, and also, okay, here's the point. Um, now that we've put something in the buffer, we need to wake up anyone who's waiting to receive so that they can call poll and actually receive it. Okay, so we're going to do, we're going to somehow wake up this waker. Um, if it exists, so we can just do, like if it was a nun, we won't get into this code, but that's okay. If no one's listening, there's no one to wake up. Maybe they're going to listen soon. And now we just call wake. I think that's it. Um, oh, we need an asref. So we don't want to take the waker out of, you know, we just need a reference to it. Um, oh, now does wake take, um, wake consumes the waker. That's interesting. Can we clone it? Looks like we can clone it. Okay. So maybe that, I don't know if cloning a waker is okay. We'll have to see. Um, What did the to do say? Maybe we should just undo our deletion of the to do. It just says wake it by reference if it's set. So we we did the asref, so we got it by reference here. So this is this here is a reference to a waker, but then we're calling wake on a clone of it. So just, just before, in that case, there's some kind of foot gun here. Oh, look, there's a wake by ref. Right, good. Good. That was a foot gun. We probably wouldn't have actually woken it. We'd have woken some copy of it. Um, so it seems like wake by ref. They, they were pushing us that way. And then we can return. Okay. All right. So sending seems reasonable. Either there's no receiver, so it's an error, or put it in the queue and then tell it there's something in the queue if it needs to know. Okay. Cloning a sender. Yep. Okay. So um, when we clone a sender, we need to tell it that it's number of transmitters. Why am I not getting? Transaction. Oh, hang on, hang on. Inner is an arc. Yeah, we need to lock it. Here we are. So we, we had an arc there. We need to um, lock the mutex that's inside. Ah, oh, but it's an... Okay, hold on. Hold on. This is confusing. We're cloning a sender. Um, uh, oh, what type of lock is this? It's this not okay. All right, all right, all right. Ignore me. I was, I was assuming this was a Tokyo. This is a confusing thing. Let me let me stop and explain it. So there's two types of mutex. They're both called mutex, which is confusing. Um, there is a stood sync mutex, which is what this is. Stood sync mutex mutex, um, uh, and there is also a Tokyo mutex, which is um, uh, which you shouldn't use unless you need, find you need it. And that, when you lock a Tokyo mutex, um, that is an async function which you need to await, and then you'll get the lock after you've awaited. When you lock a normal mutex, it's not an async function, it's a sync function, and it returns a result because the other thre another thread might have panicked whilst holding this lock. And you just need to unwrap that result to be able to use it. No, you normally, you don't have to unwrap it, you could deal with the error. Normally, people unwrap because it basically means that some other thread panicked so it's put, it's kind of reasonable for us to panic here unless we want to deal with like um, recovering from panics in other threads. Anyway, so um, we've, we've got an arc of the inner. We cloned it. 
So now we share ownership between um, the original self dot inner of this sender and this new inner that we've just created. They share ownership of the actual inner. So this is the the. <laughs> there's two arcs. They both share ownership of the the one inner. Uh, then we unlock that inner in order to modify it and set the number of transactions to be one uh, transmitters to be one more. Um, so we've done that to do. Uh, now we need to create a new sender because clone returns. Let's call it itself. Um, uh, yep. And what does self contain? Just inner. All right. So we um, we've made ourselves a new inner, which is an arc of a mutex of an of an inner. So <laughs> this thing inner is not an inner. It's an arc of a mutex of an inner. Um, we so we cloned it. We uh, modified it, modified the in in thing in thing inside rather, um, and then we've returned that new uh, pointer to that inner. So it's shared between the sender and other the uh, the original sender, the new sender, and obviously presumably the receiver and possibly other senders. All right, so what happens when we drop a sender? Well, we get hold of the, um, we unlock the inner, and then we reduce the number of senders. And we better wake up the waker. Why? Uh, ah, because we need to, we need to notice not sure why. Not sure why, but let's do what they say. Um, what is Waker? Oh, we need to, yeah. Well, I guess we need to as ref it again. So we've got an option, yeah, so waker is an option of waker. We need an option of reference to waker, so we as ref. Um, now we've got a reference to a waker, um, if the option's populated, and then we can say wake by ref again. Not sure why we do this line. Uh, we could try deleting it and see whether any tests fail. So I think I've done all the to-dos. Uh, so let's run the test. If, th if this just works first time, it's going to be an absolute miracle, isn't it? It does. It does work first time. Go us. I think we'll stop there, but we'll do one check. What happens if we don't wake up when... Um, no, it wasn't here. When we drop a sender. Can we see any evidence? If we can't, then perhaps we'd leave it as a mystery. No? Okay. So, a um, bit of a mystery to me why we need to wake up... Uh, which means basically telling things who are polling the receiver um, why we need to wake up things who are people who are polling the receiver when one of the senders gets dropped. Maybe it's just good practice to always wake up when something significant happens. Um, oh, no, no, I figured it out. Okay, so the, I think the answer is we need to poll next because if there are no transmitters left... We want to return none. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's see if we can write a test for this. So this would be the case where um, we drop a sender and we want the receiver to, to find out um, that it's all ended. So this would be... Um, I guess this test is supposed to check for it. But yeah, I guess we need it to, let's see if we can somehow make a test that fails. Looks a bit like this. These are the test names I'm not keen on, by the way. But anyway, let's say, um, dropping sender while receiver is waiting, wakes receiver, right? So, don't drop the sender yet. Um, Spawn, I think we spawn a receiver. How's this going to work? I think we want to spawn something which um, is 
um, receiving. So we're going to do rx dot next dot await, and then I guess we'll do something like um, finished equals true, and here we're going to have some kind of thing called finished. No, <laughs> full such should be. Uh, now we're going to have. Pro I think we're going to have problems with ownership, so we'll think about that. Then we drop the receiver. Oh. Uh, drop the transmitter. Sorry. Drop the sender. And then. Um, and then we need to somehow like wait. Like we need, basically, we need this to have like tried to poll once and failed. And then get get woken. Demonstrate it gets woken up. So I guess we want to assert that that finished is true. But we need to kind of we need to kind of do something method first, yeah. And also we've got a problem here that um, finished this. So what if it was, this was like an arc? Would that work? And then we can like I um, yeah, okay. All right. So the I, I'm not going to do this because I I think you're going to get bored of watching me figure out stuff that I don't understand. Um so let's not do that. Um but let me try and explain what I'm trying to do to try and explain uh why we need that wake in case you haven't got it. We probably got it already. But anyway, the point is if we've if we've got a receiver which is um patiently waiting for something to come from a sender, but then we drop the last sender, that receiver needs to um, finish waiting and get back a none to say there are no more senders anymore. So that's why we need to wake to tell the runtime you should poll, you should repoll your receivers because you're going to get back a none from that receiver. Uh, all right, so that satisfied me at least to uh, as to why we needed that wake. All right, um, hope you enjoyed. We'll be back soon for the next exercise. Um, might be a bit slower over the next few weeks, but we're still going. Uh, lots more videos to come. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.